Correctly managing the antenna system is one of the most critical aspects of successful RF transmission. Like we discussed before, there are many types of antennas we can use, each of which has characteristics that lend it to specific applications. Plus, we can use tools like splitters and combiners, which make the RF distribution more streamlined and effective. First, we look at splitters and combiners, which let us use one antenna or one set of antennas for multiple wireless systems. Then we look at the frequency ranges of antennas, which vary by type. And finally, we talk about diversity receivers, which use two antennas to create redundancy. If we have something like six wireless mics on stage, using an antenna splitter will let us use one antenna or one set of antennas for all six receivers. And in the opposite direction, we can use an antenna combiner to transmit a bunch of signals through a single antenna, like a helical, like we often do with IEMs. Not only does this streamline the setup visually, but using a ton of antennas right next to each other can cause some other issues. One thing to keep in mind, just like all wireless equipment, antennas are made to work in specific frequency ranges. This is important to remember because if we have an antenna that operates in one frequency range, and the receiver operates in a different frequency range, then it's not going to work. Now, this can happen especially with whip and shark fin antennas, which have less bandwidth than helicals. But since helicals have a wider bandwidth, they are more effective at handling a wide range of both transmitters and receivers. And using a helical with splitters or combiners is super common. All right, the last thing we discuss in this course is diversity receivers. With non-diversity receivers, we use a single antenna, and with diversity receivers, we use two antennas. And to understand why we need to do this, we have to revisit the polar pattern of a quarter wave antenna. Remember how this antenna has an omnidirectional polar pattern, but it transmits off the sides like on a plane? Well, when we're indoors and that plane bounces off the walls and ceilings, it can actually arrive at the antenna out of phase, which cancels it out and causes dropouts. And this is pretty random and hard to predict and depends on the position of the antenna on stage, which is usually moving around, and the size and shape of the room and the exact location of the other antenna. So with diversity receivers, we add a second antenna, which should be at least one wavelength apart. For UHF, this is about 12 to 15 inches, but around 10 feet is often ideal, depending on the size of the stage then the receiver can use both antennas to create a more secure connection by using the stronger audio signal from either antenna at any given time. But however far apart the antennas are, it is important to make sure they have a clean line of sight, which sometimes requires getting them up in the air. RF can pass through objects like the human body, but this definitely increases the chance for dropouts. Now the terminology can get a little weird with this because different systems have varying levels of diversity and of course they tend to get better with more expensive systems. But this Digital 6000 has what we call true diversity, which means each antenna has a completely separate radio receiver and this offers real redundancy for receiving antennas. However, with helical antennas, the spiral design actually solves the phase problem. The quarter wave antennas on stage that are constantly changing the position of their transmitting plane don't really have as much trouble communicating with the spiral. So we only need one of them and don't have to use two for diversity receivers. This ends up being really effective and is often what we use for critical applications in professional live music production. In this video, we looked at splitters and combiners, which use one antenna or one pair of antennas for diversity receivers. We then talked about frequency ranges of antennas, which do vary by type, and we discussed diversity receivers, which use two antennas to create redundancy.